everyone. I'm Liz Brown Swanson with the great mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, Mayor Eric Alegria. Thank you for joining us for a special edition of RPV City Talk on the Road. This is our year in review where the mayor, we're going to take a trip down memory lane and look at 2021. I can't believe we're already here. I can't believe it's the end of 2021. All right, so I know we have a lot to cover in this program. We were busy during the year. Um, I'm just wondering what you're going to remember most as serving as mayor for 2021. Oh, thank you, Liz. So hard to, to summarize it to a few brief thoughts, but I, I will think about the recovery as we began the recovery from the pandemic, the work we did with our residents and our businesses and the schools and seeing that 2021 when it was a year of reopening has been wonderful. Being able to maintain our city services and budget during that time, uh, although notable every year was particularly notable this last year, given the impact that many cities experienced from the pandemic. And of course, um, our work just to continue to improve the quality of life, which our council always strives to do. And we were able to achieve uh, the fourth safest city in the state of California, uh, introduce you know new activities to bring us together, like our uh, movies in the park, as well as our concerts in the park. And then um by the time this airs, also our Skating by the Sea, which we're, we're excited to launch um, at the end of this week. So lots to be proud of and excited about and, and more to be done for the future as well as we you know look ahead into to 2021. I know we've come a long way when you think back to when we started this year in January. The City Hall was still temporarily closed because of the pandemic. Um, at the same time, the city had just conducted a citizen satisfaction survey to, to talk about the quality of life going on in the city. And, you know, now that we are here 11 months later, I'm just wondering what you feel is sort of, as we continue to navigate the pandemic's impact, how would you describe the quality of life today? I think that the quality of life in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes continues to, continues to improve. And that's because of the dedication and investment of so many of us in the community that spend our time trying to make things better. Um, and we've been fortunate, of course, because of the introduction of the vaccine and yes. All this education and, and, you know, municipalities have played a role in helping to communicate out important messages related to public health to it, their residents. And I think the RP, city of RPV is no different. We've been able to play an instrumental and important role in, in that education. In terms of how the city was operating, I mean, you were very proactive, our city staff and the council, to make sure that you were reaching every, every resident, uh, senior citizens, for example, if they needed assistance, dealing with the schools and students and just making sure that everybody was still trying to get back on track. And um, again, just also making sure we're kind of reopened the city so that we have activities and are able to come out and enjoy and even attend city council meetings, right? Uh, that's right, some of the most basic <laughs> things. And I'm so proud of the perseverance of all of us to go through that, those hybrid formats for our council meetings. And you mentioned a few things, yes. our seniors, our Meals on Wheels for our seniors, our small business assistance program for our small businesses locally, and just lots of other ways that the city uh, worked to uh, make those lives of our residents in our our businesses a little bit better. The city council, uh, the commissions, the committee, volunteer committees, the staff, all busy. You guys have had hundreds of meetings and ladies um, throughout this year conducting business for the city. Um, what would you say when you reflect back, what are some of the, the top accomplishments um, that took place for 2021? Oh, You've done you. a lot. <laughs> Yes, uh, I would I would refer to uh, our Ladera Linda Community Park project. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've made some significant progress, um, and we're excited. We've got through the planning phase, the finance phase, and looking to um, a quarter one uh, groundbreaking in 2022. So we are we are ready for that project to launch. Work has continued as it relates to the Civic Center. We still have big ideas on uh, how that can be an activity center in the heart of mm -hmm. our city. Uh, so more to come on that, but we've done some, and on our December 7th agenda, we're going to do some more program validation on what we want up there, collect our community's feedback, and um, and that work continues on. And then I'll just point out Del Cerro. I, I, I am proud of the fact that uh, our council heard, you know, the, the concerns from our residents in the Del Cerro community, and we're able to work, uh, thanks to staff, on some remedies and solutions to make things a little bit better up there. There's lots of work happening and more work to come, such as the housing element. That's certainly going to be a big issue as we go into the beginning of the new year, um, as well as Western beautification, where we've started some work, but we have much more work that we'd like to do. 
And of course, all these projects we're talking about, Ladera Linda, they take money and financing and just adopting the budget for the year was also a big accomplishment. If we want to reflect back on that, because, um, you know, the city is uh, operates lean and mean. And uh, so you were able to pull that off. That's well. right. Yeah. Thank you to our, our fiscal policies and, you know, longstanding policies of having reserves. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were prepared for a moment like this. And uh, we are quite fortunate to be in such a good place. Not all cities are in such good standing, and we're very fortunate. In terms of finances, we receive federal assistance as well. How is that playing into the year and what, and the, and what we've been able to do? I know some of the financing from the federal government will go towards Ladera Linda. Correct. So we were able to uh, receive about half of $9.9 million this year, and then we'll mm -hmm. get the second half of that $9.9 million next year to uh, really make up our losses as it relates to our transit occupancy tax in particular, our sales tax also. And uh, that money usually goes towards our capital projects. And so uh, it would have gone towards these projects either way. Uh, and again, luckily, the core services of our city have always um, continued and, and remain intact. And therefore, we had the luxury of using those funds for that purpose. Yes. And of course, talk about... Uh what beautification projects that have gone on through this year, uh, Western Ave in particular, that's been a highlight for the for the staff to accomplish it's, and council. It, it's been on the council's mind for a long time. Um, some of the more, I guess, cosmetic work has begun. Mm -hmm. You've got repainting of bus benches and yep. curb paint and new waste receptacles and planners that needed to be replaced and all sorts of things. We're planning in the next couple of months to also uh, paint the track perimeter walls a nice uniform color and look to install some banners on streetlights. Um, these are all sort of, I'll say, preliminary steps toward a broader vision of making Western as welcoming as possible for the people that come into our city. They need to know that they're coming into the great city of French Palos Verdes. And of course, what helps make our city great, of course, is our residents and our leaders like you and everyone that dedicates and volunteers their time. There's a leadership academy um, that really took off this year in a different way. It was. I, I did it years ago, and, I, and they've really worked to build it and to, to get people in our community interested in vo volunteering their time and getting involved. Talk about that and the, and the role that has played this year. Uh, Leadership Academy is such an important instrument for us to engage residents who are interested in giving up their time and energy. And I always say this, Liz, but we are what we are because of people that are willing to give up their time and energy to uh, making the city better and our community better. And, and that's what we had this last year. I was so pleased that we were able to reintroduce that Leadership Academy and have some really capable residents willing to come out, spend the time with our city staff learning about our city. And hopefully some are already contributing on commission and committees. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully others that are not will, uh, will step forward and help us out. Yes. As we sit here right now on uh, PV Drive South, right up the road is the Point Vicente Interpretive Center, which, of course, we brought one of our mayor's show from there. A lot happening always at PVIC, including this effort to bring bubbles back. Yes. Um, that was an accomplishment for the city. Talk about the Bubbles GoFundMe effort that took place in 2021. Well, I'd be remiss if I didn't <laughs> mention the long history, of course, as it relates to, to bubbles and, and a lot of passion from a lot of our civic leaders and residents. And thanks to a few of our local residents. John Sanson and, and uh, Suzanne Seymour yes. who were willing to step forward and and uh, set uh, and establish that uh, fundraising campaign. It's great to see that the effort has begun and and we're hopeful the bubbles will rise again. And that's a three hundred thousand dollar restoration project. So you know, I don't know. That's that, a lot of bubbles. That's a lot of bubbles. <laughs> I'm not sure people always appreciate how much work needs to go into restoring you know such a beautiful, well, such a landmark at the old marine land. And um, I guess to find out more about donating, residents can participate by checking it all out on the city's website, which we always mention, rpvca.gov. During this program, it's a resource for everything and anything you need to find out about the city, including our schedule on RPV TV when you want to watch all the great programming like the council meetings. Um, I want to talk about here in the moment, we're sitting here at the entrance to the Portuguese Bend Nature Preserve. We're at the Portuguese Bend Reserve because there's the reserves within the preserve. Um, and, uh, and so this is an area that has no notoriety worldwide because of our landslide. And um, this has been going on for over half a century, this landslide in the Portuguese Bend area. City's working hard always to try to mitigate it. But this year, you've really, this council has moved forward. I don't know if I want to use the word moved, because that's what's going on with this landslide every day. So, <laughs> but tell <laughs> no us about intended. what was happening, um, what you've been able to do this year, different than other councils. I know it's been an issue. To, it's been identified by prior councils. I am very proud of this council. Um, as they've engaged in a you know active effort to you know, really move 
the plan forward. And so there's a conceptual plan in, in 2019 that was presented and accepted by this current city council. Mm -hmm. And the process of uh, the California Environmental Quality Plan, a CEQA process, began from that standpoint. And that's sort of where we've been for some time now. But uh, we have a plan that, that includes a couple of different elements, filling our fissures, installing service drains, and installing hydro augers, um, sort of in a three-phased approach. The estimate of the, the overall cost is about $30 million. So we've been actively campaigning to our our state and federal leaders. Right to up to the White House you're campaigning, right? Right up to our White House to see if we can get a little bit of help, especially with all this discussion um, in Washington, D.C. about infrastructure. Uh, we're looking to see where we can get a little bit of help. And we've had you know some of our representatives out here uh, as well as um, – district directors from some of their office and have given them a nice tour of the, the landslide to show them kind of what we're dealing with and see if they can help us out. I was asking before we went on camera, like, where do you go? So you take, you're taking representatives with public works officials, I'm sure, up into, like you say, look at fissures. I don't know, perhaps see where some of the dewatering wells were located and explaining what's going on here with the topography and the science behind it. Exactly. And we also look at some of the local homes that have been impacted by mm -hmm. this, and that's a significant part of this landslide as well. We have homes that have been uh, had been significantly impacted by the movement. And of course, this issue is not just local, because if this road, we're sitting here at PV Drive South on the famous bumpy road, which what, does the city spend a half a million dollars at least a year fixing this road? More, you, yeah, yes, around $800,000, sometimes up to a million dollars a year. So it's a big price, problem. big price tag on that. But if, the, if it were to ever, if we lost this road, it would be a huge impact economically to the whole community. Yes. Um, through the it, South Bay. There's impacts. a lot of issues tied to it, transportation and environmental concerns, of course, because it's so close to the preserve. Uh, and then of all our utilities could be affected by it as well. So just a lot going on there that we continue to strive to right. address. But the, but the big next step is you're actually, the city's hiring a project manager. Yes. That's a big deal. Yes. We, Good. We could use the expertise and the help and uh, starting to take those next steps toward implementing our plan. Thank you for that update on the landslide. Of course, this issue will continue in the new year and we look forward to more updates. Um, now we're going to move on, though, to another topic involving land right up the street is the historic Hatano Farm. Um, it is a rich history with Japanese farming in this community for decades, and the matter came before the council in November. Um, you had to make a decision to end a lease agreement with the current uh, foreman that is uh, farming that land. Explain what's going on there and the decision the council made. Thank you. Yes, long, rich history for this particular property. Um, and not an easy decision for the council to consider. Mm -hmm. But when the city received the property as it was transferred in 1976 from the federal government to the city, it also was accompanied by National Park Service restrictions, which really does limit what, what can be done and what that property can be used for. The status quo for many years was just continued, which was to you know lease out that property for the purposes of farming. But that really is at odds with the, the, the National Park Service mm -hmm. and the overall natural conservation plan that we have for the space for in order to, to be a passive recreational space. Specifically, for the, too. It can't be used for commercial um, for commercial use, and that's what's been going on there. Correct. It's got a commercial use. That is inconsistent with uh, the intended use of the property, and that's why the council uh, did make the decision to, to end the lease. Uh, the staff did bring some ideas to the council, such as a community garden, a uh, native plant and seed nursery, which the Palos Verdes Land Conservancy expressed an interest in cultivating. Uh, so there's some great ideas and things that could be done there. And we've asked that the Land Conservancy and staff to go back and come back with um, you know, an I ideal location for that seed and plant nursery, some thoughts on the community garden and, and um, other steps that we could take to restore it once the farm's been transitioned. Uh, into you know more of its natural state, so that's where we're at uh, currently. And for the farmer that there's now, he he has until June or so. He's got a, a nine, nine months. Nine months to just make a decision on what how what he'll do next. So he's got some time there to deal with it. And um, and the bottom line is, this is a resource that the community should all be able to enjoy. You can't gift public land, that's, which is sort of what was going on there in the end. That is right? a great summary of what the situation so, is. So, um, and going forward, I think uh, new new seeds will be growing out of it 
And uh, so we look forward to seeing what will happen next there. Um, and on the subject of the community, this is a time in the program I think it would be great to highlight. There's been so many special events you as mayor have participated in um, throughout 2021. I actually came up with a top five list for you uh -oh, uh -oh. that we're going to have to all get right. through. Um, all right. So not in any order, but obviously our sister city partnership, Socorro City. Let's start with there was a great ceremony to um, highlight our one year anniversary of being sister cities with Socorro City Japan. So just share a highlight from that event. Uh, we're so proud of our partnership with Sakura City. Obviously during the pandemic, it was hard to sort of launch that sister city partnership, but we did and we kept it going. And we did uh, in August uh, recognize that partnership and the first anniversary of it with the opening of a directional sign uh, that, that specifies the number of miles to Sakura City. And uh, there was just a great cultural exchange, lots of videos, you know, lots of ideas. And that's really the intent of the, the relationship. And it will continue on in the new year as well. And on the subject of videos, you are a star with your family in Japan. Oh, <laughs> because we put together, you know, part of that partnership was a cultural exchange program with Socorro City. And uh, so there were some produ videos produced. And you are reading The Little Engine That oh, Could with uh, your children in Japanese. It's an important It's an important <laughs> story. We're going to show some video of that now. But it Absolutely. was fabulous. Um, you are the mayor that could. You've done a lot this year. Um, moving on to the top five list, there was movies in the park came back, concerts in the park, 4th of July, trunk or treat. Share a few of moments from those exciting times. Oh, all special events and really just the general feeling of getting our residents and the community at, as, at large out to enjoy each other's company, given what we've all gone through, is what's just most notable and memory, memorable to me. And you know, introducing those concerts in the park in addition to those movies uh, in the park was was really fun. I know that you are all at some of them. And, yes. Um, people had a chance to come out and enjoy. And we really see ourselves as a city that's an active city that's working to engage our residents and get them out in order to enjoy each other. Especially like the 4th of July, because after la the, you know, 2020 of not having that event, um, it's really important. Everybody just wants to be together which was evident at Trunk or Treat. I think there were thousands of people that showed up for that. I don't, not Traditionally, expected. we haven't had yes, that many people. It was and really I, fun. I, the number I've been quoted is about 2,000 plus people came by to enjoy Trunk or Treat. So another really successful event for our community to come out. And another and really significant uh, gathering happened just up the street here at Abalone Cove. We mentioned this in our last city talk, but I just want to bring it up again because it was so spectacular. And that was the unveiling of the Gabrielino Tongva Native American monument. Very important and really special. Well, we just touched on a moment ago, you know, another aspect of our history in the city. And I, I know our council's passionate about celebrating our history and recognizing the first peoples of Los Angeles mm -hmm. and those that came before us and cultivated this land um, is was an important uh, step in this this the city and uh, being able to unveil that monument in front of that nice sized group of people who came out to enjoy it was really a really a pleasure. Yeah, our city is so dedicated to preserving history here for sure. Yes. And you can learn this going by Point Vicente Interpretive Center. There is the the Tongva uh, exhibit there. And stop by Abcove and, and take time to take pause at that monument. It's very special. Mayoral activities. Again, we could have three shows on all you're doing. You're not just at council meetings. You're at many events, um, including your mayor's breakfasts that are once a month with all the commission and committee member chairs, et cetera. Talk about that. Oh, I, it's always been, I, I like to say, one of my favorite meetings. We get to, the mayor as well as a council member, an additional council member, get to sit down each month with the uh, chairs of our commi committees and commissions. And in order to just talk about the city, what's happening, have a nice open dialogue. And I've always gotten great feedback, great thoughts, great ideas from our various leaders across the city who have participated in that breakfast. So it's just something that's special to me and um, something yes. I'll miss. Yes. And you had your mayor's honoree program. I think you uh, recognize 18 spectacular community members that are making a huge difference in the community. You just gathered for a luncheon. How did that go? Oh, it was wonderful to have a nice luncheon. Throughout the year, uh, we had a mayor's honoree program, as you mentioned, that, that acknowledged 18 individuals and organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to 2020 uh, honorees by the uh, prior mayor, uh, John Cruikshank, so we combined those two yes. into one event as a mayor's honorees luncheon to really bring people that are special to our community and doing really meaningful things for our city as well as the greater global community and just tell them that they're special to us and that we appreciate them. And I, I had a great time. Yes. And one of your uh, last big moments is mayor, again, right up the street. We're on here on PV Drive, Strong, you at 
uh, Trump National for the Chamber of the Year, Citizen of the Year Awards, um, which recognize the hard work of men and women our first responders, um, that was incredibly special. That was a really special event. Our first responders um, really deserve our thanks, our gratitude, and all that they've helped us shepherd us through over the last two years. And it was nice to have that lunch and take a moment to recognize them and, and all that they've done to you know make our lives a little bit easier. So it was really special. We did get to have a nice moment of silence to recognize those who've lost their lives, who are first responders due to the coronavirus particularly, but that doesn't speak to the you know, many, many more that have given their life to, to serve us and uh, to take care of us and, and meet our needs at a difficult time. Yes, and I also want to mention the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce that puts that event on every year to have Citizen of the Year Awards. I think it was incredible that they you know, did this this time just to honor all the different uh, important citizens that Chamber made a difference. Chamber of Commerce did a great job. Yes. Really wonderful event. Um, we're going to have to start to wrap up here. Resident feedback. As mayor, you get emails, you see people at all these events. Um, what do you feel like, what, what were you hearing from RPD residents in 2021 that really you, you that sat with you and you reflected on? Uh, well, a lot of just frustration, to be honest. At the beginning of the year, people were really frustrated. Um, uh, given all that we're encountering and dealing with uh, small business owners and parents of school, you know, school age children and trying to come out of the pandemic, you know, better than ever has been, you know, really a, a primary message, I think, of the year. And the fact that we're here now towards the end of the year and things are improved and we're on the, the, the road to recovery is uh, is something that I'm I'm proud of. Yeah. And for residents that want to be more engaged and informed, obviously, I always say our city website, there's the city manager's weekly report. Um, obviously, we do all of our work at RPV TV and showcase council meetings and social media. Um, there's lots of ways that you can stay connected to kind of find out what's going on. I, I get uh, communications in a variety of ways, mm -hmm. emails and calls or uh, participation in our hybrid council meetings. So those of you who can't make our council meetings yes. in person, still, we are still offering the option of recordings for specific items and so on. So there's lots of ways to get your your uh, your comments into the city yes. council. And of course, the next city council meeting you'll be at is the December 7th, the changing of the guard. It's a tradition annually where there's the passing of the baton to the next incoming mayor. There's a rotation the city council does. Um, and so, not I, you know, do you have any special tips for the next mayor? <laughs> I'm sure the next mayor. <laughs> I don't want to say advice. <laughs> just I'm sure the next mayor will be just fine. This is a great, you know, democratic process that our mm -hmm. city goes through. Um, it's been an honor to, to serve as the mayor this past year, and uh, I'm excited to support the next mayor as well and continue the great work of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. What are you looking forward to in 2022? Oh, a lot of great work. I, I am looking forward to the groundbreaking at Ladera Linda and much more to come as it relates to us in our planning, as it relates to the Civic Center, uh, and then, of course, all these other issues that are out there. So the work goes on. And we should say it's Ladera Linda Community Park. Yes. That was the official name now. Yes. That's right. Okay, got it. But so there's a lot more things that you'll be doing. Any final mayor's announcements to share? Well, a couple of things are coming up as we go into the holidays. So okay. starting December 3rd, we're going to have our, our first skating by the sea with a tree lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, and through the weekends in December and going into the full week of the final week of December, we're going to have skating by the sea, a temporary synthetic ice for our, our community to come out and enjoy ice skate uh, by the sea, as it were. And you got to make reservations to, to do There's, that. That's right. There's a reservation system. So uh, take a look at our city website and get all the information. And then we also have um, Rolling Hills Estates does host the really uh, nice uh, holiday parade. It is back. We did a reverse parade last year that I participated yes. in this year. There's the full parade. is still you Practice planned. your wave because the mayor, you'll be there as mayor. <laughs> that's right. I'll work <laughs> on it. So that's coming up. Um, also on December uh, 4th, the day after our, our Skating by the Sea. And then finally, Lomita Station will be guiding Santa around RPV. So... You know, yes. Look out for more information. We will on definitely that as well. be getting into uh, festive times here for the month, and the city needs that and wants that. And I'm really super excited that you have pushed forward. Uh, you know, especially I think you're you're a dad with four kids, so. <laughs> We've got to have lots of fun for the kids, and that skating rink will be just that. And I think they've got lots of cool things planned, including I heard a frozen night. 
Uh, there's all like sorts Olaf of activities coming, coming to our PVC. Even a disco night, as I understand. <laughs> yeah, for it. New so, Year's Eve. Yes. So I love the enthusiasm of our Rec and Parks crew that puts a lot of these activities together. Well, the sun is setting here, so yes. we probably will have to wrap it up. But I just want to thank you. Um, you've been an amazing mayor. I, I'm a resident here. You've served so well, our residents, and um, and grateful. All these months you've come every month um, on City Talk to update the residents. And we've we've traveled everywhere. We've, we've traveled everywhere. Ladero, Linda, Del Cerro, Del Cerro Park, PVIC, you named it. And I appreciate that you got us you got us out on the road with the community. Well, you've always <laughs> thanked me, Liz, but really I, we should all be thanking you and Maria and Jeff and Carlos as well for the work that you do for our city, getting information out to our residents and uh, we're, we're know, grateful keeping the communication going so i'm really grateful for all the time we've got to spend okay i'm not going to put you in the spot if you have any new year's resolutions but if there's one you want to share just <laughs> to, to, well just to, to continue to serve our community um and by the time this is uh this is played. I, I believe I'll be a council member again. again yes. Uh, so the work of the council, as I said, continues on. Um, yes. And, and we've got a great council doing great work. Uh, reach out to us at any time if you need anything. There's no I in team, and you That's are a right. great team. All right, I want to say happy holidays happy to holidays. You and your family and to everybody watching. Thank you for joining us on this year in review on RPV City Talk on the road. Happy holidays, everyone. Thanks for watching.